Our next lesson with factoring polynomials deals with factoring trinomials. Tri, just like tricycle, meaning three, three terms. Before we look at the polynomials, let's just start with numbers. We'll play a little number game. We want to write pairs of factors, two factors, including negative numbers, for the number given in the first column. And then in the right column, we're going to add those factors together and see if we can come up with the answer to the question. So here in the first example, we're looking at factors of 10. And we want to add them together. And our goal is to find the factor pair that has a sum of negative 11. So let's start out simple. 1 times 10. 1 times 10 is 10. 1 plus 10 is 11. Well, 11, that's a positive 11, so that doesn't work. So we try another factor. 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 plus 5 is 7. That one doesn't work either. 7 and negative 11 are not the same. And so we try another one. Negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10, because when we multiply two negative numbers together, negative times a negative will give us a positive. So negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10. And look what happens when we add them together. Negative 1 plus negative 10 is negative 11. So the factor pair with a sum of negative 11 was negative 1 and negative 10. We could go ahead and find the last factor pair for 10, negative 2 times negative 5. And negative 2 plus negative 5 would give us negative 7, which also doesn't work to answer our question of a sum of negative 11. But this is the kind of game we're going to play. So I'll work the first one with factors of 20. I'll show you how to do it from scratch. And then I want you to try the factors of 24 on your own. So you try number two on your own, but let's do number one together. When I'm trying to find these factors of 20, it's okay to randomly guess, check your work, or use the numbers that you already know, the multiplication of the factors that you already know for 20, like 4 times 5 and 2 times 10. I like being a little more systematic because I like to see those patterns. So I'm going to start with 1. Every single time I play this game, I start with 1. 1 times what will give me 20? 1 times 20 will give me 20. And then I add them together. 1 plus 20 is 21. Now, the question that I'm being asked, because there's always a question here, which factor pair had a sum of negative 12? So we're ultimately looking for the factor pair that has a sum of negative 12. And a little bit later, that will become important to us and help us narrow our focus on the factors. What I mean by that is I want a sum of negative 12, so I shouldn't be looking at positive factors of 20. I should be looking at negative factors of 20. But for the sake of the game, I'm going to keep going with what I have. 2 times 10 will give me 20, and 2 plus 10 will give me 12, and the last positive pair factor of 20. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 plus 5 is 9. So these don't work. Let's switch to negatives. Negative 1 and negative 20 multiply together to be positive 20. And I add them. Negative 1 plus negative 20 is negative 21. That's still too big. So we try the next one. Negative 2 times negative 10 will give us negative 20. Negative 2 plus negative 10 is negative 12. So the factor pair with a sum of negative 12, negative 2, and negative 10. One more factor pair in here. If we were doing a real factoring problem with the trinomials, we would stop once we had the right factor pair. But just for the sake of this exercise, we can try the last one. Negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9. It doesn't work. And that's okay. But that's the game we're going to play. So try finding factor pairs of 24 
and for 24 we want the sum to be negative 10. So try that on your own. See if you can get the factor pair. And if you want to check, go pop up to the one note and you can check your answer. We're going to change that instead of popping over to the one note. Pause the video, try the factors of 24 on your own, and come back and we'll work through it together. This time, instead of just starting with one and chugging through all the numbers, let's look at our goal. Our goal is a sum of negative 10, and we're asked to find factors of 24. So we noticed before when we were working through these problems, the factor pairs with sums that were negative were all negative numbers here in these examples. We had positive numbers that we're starting with, but negative sums. And so the only way we can have a positive multiple, negative 1 times negative 10 would give us positive 10. I needed both of those factors to be negative. So let's try down here for 24. Let's start out with negatives. Negative 1 times negative 24 will give us positive 24. And when we add them, negative 1 plus negative 24 will give us negative 25. Negative 2, notice I'm starting a pattern. I'm doing this on purpose because I don't want to miss any. I start at 1 or I start at negative 1 and I just move through the numbers in order. So negative 1, negative 24, negative 2, and negative 12. And I add these together. Negative 2 plus negative 12 is going to give me negative 14. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I don't have to write this so small. So we try negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 8 will give us tw positive 24 when we multiply them. If we add them, negative 3 plus negative 8 is negative 11. Not negative 10, but we're getting closer. Notice we started with negative 25 and we're getting closer to negative 10. That's why I like doing it in order like this. I just start at 1 or I start at negative 1 and I just go through every single number. And if one number isn't a factor of the given number, and give you an example, backing up a little bit, notice for factors of 20, I skipped 3. Because 3 isn't a perfect factor of 20. There's no number multiplied by 3 that will give me 20. No whole number multiplied by 3 will give me 20. So I just skip it. So if we come up with a number that's not a factor, we skip it. We're just looking for whole number factors in these problems. And so 1, 2, 3, let's try negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 6 will give me positive 24. Negative 4 plus negative 6 is negative 10. And there I have my factor pairs, negative 4 and negative 6. So we found our factor pair with, that created a sum of negative 10. Negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. Negative 4 plus negative 6 is negative 10. We can stop. Once we find the numbers that work, we're done. Let's try one more together. And this one, now we're starting with a pretty big number, 210. And we want a factor pair that has a sum of 29. So I'm going to pull out my calculator on this one. And so we'll have it floating around every now and then. So for a problem like this with a really big number, 210 and Sure, you can come up with some numbers to multiply to get 210. Let's use the calculator and chug through it and see if we can find the numbers. My table may not be big enough. I'm not sure. We'll have to see that in a moment, but let's try it. So since I have a positive number that I'm given, factors of 210, and I have a positive number sum, sum of 29 that I'm looking for, I should focus on positive factors of the big number. Remember that if I have a negative times a negative, that gives me a positive, but a negative plus a negative will give me a negative number. And since my sum of 29, that's positive, I need to add positive numbers together. So I'm gonna look at positive factors of 21. Oh, sorry, positive factors of 210. Start out with one, one times 210. 1 plus 210 will give me 211. That's too big. Um, then we would go with 2. 
So factors of 210 two times, I don't know. So let's pull up the calculator and see if we can figure it out. Remember when you're multiplying, the opposite operation is division. So I can say 210 divided by 2 gives me 105. And I can find my factor pair by flipping the problem around and using division instead. And then we can add these 2 plus 105 gives me 107, still too big. I think 3 will work, so let's try 3. 210 divided by 3, 70. Notice we're getting closer. These numbers on the outside are getting smaller. We're getting closer to the sum of 29. I'm not sure 4 will divide 210, so let's try it. 210 divided by 4, no, we get a decimal number there, so we don't want 4. Skip 4. Let's try 5. 210 divided by 5. This one is divisible by 5 because it ends in 0. And we have 42. 5 plus 42, 47. Still too big. 6. Let's see if 6 works. 210 divided by 6, 35. 6 plus 35 will give me 41. So let's try 7. 7, oh, clear. 210 divided by 7 is 30. 7 plus 30 is 37. We're getting closer to 29. 8 is not going to work. Do you know why? Well, remember we skipped 4? If we don't have a factor of 4, we automatically do not have a factor of 8. And I'm pretty sure 9 doesn't work. But we can test it out. You can always test it out. 210 divided by 8? Nope, we get a decimal number. 210 divided by 9? No, we get a decimal number. 210 divided by 10? We get 21. And 10 plus 21 gives us 31. Two ten divided by eleven doesn't work. Two ten divided by twelve doesn't work. Two ten divided by thirteen doesn't work. Two ten divided by fourteen is fifteen. And add these together. Fourteen plus fifteen is twenty nine. So our factor pair that has a sum of 29 is 14 and 15. Looking at just the numbers like this allows us to create a smaller, more manageable problem for factoring trinomials. So we're going to use the numbers in the trinomials to create the factor number that we have to target and the sum number that we have to target. So the three numbers inside the, the trinomial will provide us with the numbers that we need to play this game with. And we'll see that in the next lesson.